Hello everyone, welcome to getting started video for Telerik Test Studio. My name is Fahad and I'll be going to some of the basic features to get started with Telerik Test Studio today. I have 11 years of experience in .NET. I love learning about new technologies and recently I've started teaching them online. You can find my YouTube channel by searching QS Drive. If you want to reach out to me, you can find my Twitter handle QS underscore drive or you can send me an email at curiousdrive at gmail.com. To get started with our test studio, we're going to need to install test studio. I'll provide the link in the video description. You can get started by using its 30 days trial. We are also going to need to install browser extensions so that your browser can be interactive with the test studio. I'll provide the link of that in the video description too. We are going to use Bookstore's app as a demo app for this video. I built this app by using Telric UI for Blazor. I also recorded videos for this. You can find the playlist in the video description too. And this app is open source. You can find the source code on GitHub. I'll provide the link of that in the video description too, so that you can practice with me. So the scope of this video is to create a test project, get started with Telric Test Studio, record some tests and run those tests and view results. So let's get started. Before we get started with creating our first test project, let's talk about the app that we're going to use for this demo. You can get this app from this link. If your machine is not set up to run source code, that's fine. You can go to demos.telric.com for Blazor UI. All the tests that we're going to write, you can get the components from this link and write tests with me. You don't really need to run the source code on your machine. The reason why I'm going to run the source code is because later on in the video series, I want to show how you can integrate CI CD with test project so that you can run tests before deploying your app in production. So if you want to practice that with me, you can get the code by clicking on this code button. You can either clone this project or download a zip version of this app. I've already done that. You can see that I have this Telric Blazor UI. I'm going to go to the source folder here and you can see that this is a Blazor WebAssembly application with HP.NET Core as a backend. I'm going to go to the server folder and open this folder in command line. You're going to need to have .NET 5 and Telric UI for Blazor installed on your machine in order to run this project. So make sure that you have that. I'm going to run this project by typing .NET run. This will compile my project and run this project on localhost 5001. Let's go ahead and check out how this app looks like. I'm going to open my browser and go to localhost 5001. It will open the landing page as authors page where you can see that we're using some of the basic controls like text boxes, drop downs, check boxes on this page. And we also have a grid view here. On publishers page, we have a list view component. We are going to write some test for this component too. On books page, we are using Tulric's grid view component. Here we are going to write tests so that we can check if create, read, update, delete is working for this grid view or not. On make appointments page, we have Telric's scheduler component. We are going to write some tests for this component too. So let's get started with creating our first test project. To create a first test project, I'm going to open Telric Test Studio. If you're opening this for the first time, then it's going to ask you to log in into your Telric account. If you're using a trial version, it'll tell you how many days are left. I'm gonna click on continue trial which will open the welcome screen where we can create and manage test projects. 
I'm going to create a test project for our bookstores app and I'm going to create it in the same folder wherever my source code is. I'm going to create it in a tests folder. If you take a look at this folder, it's currently empty. It doesn't really have anything. I'm going to create a test studio project in that folder. Once I click on create, then it's going to open a test studio project for that app in that folder. If I go back to the folder, it will create data results and test list folder. These folders don't really have any files, but as we create and run tests, these folders will be in use. Let's go ahead and create our first test. For that, I'm going to right click on our test studio project and add a web test. And I would like to test if I can add a new author in the system or not. If I add a first name, last name and select a state and click on save, if that record gets inserted in this grid view or not. For that, first you need to make sure that you have extension installed for your Chrome browser. I have this progress Telric test extension installed on my browser. So I'm going to use Chrome for recording and running tests. I'm going to name my test as create a new author test. And to record the test, I'm going to right click on this test and click on record. This will ask me to enter URL where you would like to write your test. So people who are using demo.telric.com, they can enter that URL in order to practice tests with me. I'm going to use localhost 5001 because this is the app that I'm using to write my tests. I'm going to select Chrome browser because that's where my extension is installed. And I'm going to click on record. Once I click on record, then Test Studio will open Chrome and it will navigate to that URL where we can record our actions. It also opens this recorder compact toolbar here, which we are going to use to add verification step. Here, I'm going to enter my name as a new author. I'm going to select a state for myself and click on save. And you can see that that record gets added in Telric grid view. If I go back to my test studio, you can see that all of those steps got recorded in Test Studio because Test Studio now can interact with Chrome browser and record those tests. Now we would like to verify if this record really got added in Telric Grid View or not. For that, I'm going to use this compact toolbar where I'm going to select this highlighting option and then come back to this record and just hover over it It'll give me option to select Teltric Blazor Grid View Data Cell. And here I can add a quick step to make sure that the text of the first cell of Grid Data Cell is Fahad. So I'm going to select that. Once I do that, then a verification step gets added in Test Studio. If I go back, you can see that these are action steps. And the last step is the verification step. To stop recording, I'm going to close the browser. Now we have created our first test. To run this test, I'm going to right click on this test and select run test. And it's going to ask me to select the browser where we would like to execute our test. I'm going to select Chrome because that's where my extension is and then click on run. This will open the browser and perform the steps that we took in order to record the test. And then it also verify if the record is actually getting added in the system or not. It will select the drop down and then click on save. And it will verify if 
the text was exactly Fahad or not. So this is how you can record and run your tests. In the next video, we're going to dive deeper and understand how Telric Test Studio provides native support to write tests for Telric UI for Blazor, how we can use translators and how they make it easier to test Telric components. We are also going to talk about how to add wait steps so that we can test our asynchronous calls and how and why to calibrate your browsers. We are going to write some tests for Telric's drop down list, grid view, and scheduler component. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, you can post them in the comment section below. If you want to reach out to me, you can reach out to me on Twitter or you can send me an email. Just make sure that you're using this hashtag so that I know which video that you're talking about. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.